All right, there is quite a lot of me on screen now. Uh, I wanted to make a quick reaction video, kind of, on the, the video I, I uploaded yesterday about the JIT. Um, I'm a bit sick. You can probably tell it by my voice, so I'm sorry for that, but I, I really had to uh, make a little video here because there's, there's an interesting thing I missed with my benchmarks, and I'm happy about it because it turns out I'm still right, but I'll, I'll show you uh, what I'm talking about here. Uh, so so yesterday the, the JIT uh, video got published and lots of people thinking with me in the comments on, uh, you know, what could be the case. Because if you, if you don't remember, let's see here, we didn't really observe any uh, like impact by the JIT on anything basically, both the requests per second for web request and PHP send as well, which if I remember correctly was listed as one of the applications that would actually benefit from the JIT, like static analyzers, things doing a lot of loops and, and computational heavy stuff. So um, there is one thing I missed in my benchmarks and someone mentioned it here in the comments as well. Uh, I bet it has no effect because you're using a built-in server which only populates the buffer but does not actually use it. And this is interesting. My previous benchmark on, on uh, in PHP 8, I think, let's see, JIT uh, performance in uh, this one, I did with Nginx, which resulted in, in a lot more requests per second compared to the built-in server here, which had four, five requests per second. But still the difference between using the JIT and not using the JIT is, is very small. However, uh, what I didn't do in this benchmark here is to use the Mandelbrot example. You know, the, the example that we were sure of will be impacted by the JIT. And I have it copied here in this blog post. I did it for, for the previous benchmark and I forgot to do it for this one. So, so let's actually do that one as well and with, with the built-in server, that is, and see if the JIT has an effect or not. Because if it doesn't, then it means I shouldn't use the built-in server. And all these benchmarks that I did uh, were, were wrong, basically. But spoiler, I'm not wrong. Uh, so, so I have my Mandelbrot example here. I have a server without the JIT, a built-in server, and a uh, server with the JIT running in PHP 8.0.3. Because as we found out last time, if the benchmarks are correct. Uh, the difference between 8.4 and 8.3, it doesn't really matter when it comes to the JIT, okay? Um, so let's, uh, oh, the server is started. Let's open it up. Oh, that's opening in the wrong tab, actually. Okay, so this is, it's not styled properly, but this is generating a Mandelbrot kind of. This example, this code is just taken from, from the original JIT RFC. I don't know what it does. Uh, Mandelbrot is it's like Mandelbrot thingy. It's this shape. Right, it's like this infinite scalable thing. Anyway, this is a metal broad, apparently. Uh, as you can see, it takes a while to load. That's, that's the important thing here. This is a computational heavy operation to do and something the JIT might have a positive effect on. Okay, so let's, let's use AB here again. 50 requests will be more than enough. That's, that was a comment uh, someone else made as well. Let's see here. Yeah, here it is. Uh, the amount of requests, maybe 50 isn't enough, but that's not really how the JIT works, especially if we're talking about requests and PHP, because PHP boots up from scratch every time a, uh, a request comes in. Uh, the JIT works in opcache, so I reckon there is some shared stuff there as well. Um, but you should be able to see effects within 50 requests because it's not going to optimize the whole request. It's going to optimize very specific parts of your code. So after 50, if, it, if it's not optimizing after 50 requests, it's not going to optimize after 1,000, for example. So so uh, we have our Mandelbrot. Let's go here. We're going to do 50 requests on, uh, let's see here, the... You remember my uh, my great port naming scheme here. So we are uh, ha we have the JIT disabled on 8.03. Let's go. And that's done. Let's check here. 1.74 requests per second. 
makes sense that it's that it's even less than my previous benchmark because this Mandelbrot thing it's 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 heavy on the on the calculations, right? Now let's do the same thing with the JIT enabled. So uh, let's see here. I've got my JIT buffer size because this is PHP 8.3. Remember previous video. Let's do the same benchmark here. And uh, let's see how it compares. So 1.7 requests and uh, it's already done. Here we, here we have 7.36. 7.36. So yeah, you can see with the built-in server, with the Mandelbrot example, there is a huge difference. So the JIT is actually working on uh, the built-in server. The problem is with like our real life benchmarks, as I expected, the JIT doesn't really matter. Now, one thing someone mentioned here is that it might have a better effect on long running processes with intensive operations. And that's true. Uh, as we've seen the Mandelbrot example, it works. And I can imagine maybe something like uh, Laravel uh, Octane, you know, with a long running uh, asynchronous server in the backend, maybe that might have a, a, uh, a bigger benefit from the JIT compared to a normal PHP application. But here's the thing, PHP for the most part is used within a, a web context where for every request there is a new PHP process booted from scratch. Well, you're using PHP FPM to manage all of that, but it 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 is an isolated process. So yes, while in theory, long running processes might uh, benefit more from the JIT, and it might be interesting to do some benchmarks there as well. Um, it's not really what PHP is used for most often. On top of that, I I'm just remember that my PHP stand example, let's search for that. Someone made a comment there. Uh, they believe the slowest thing in PHP stand is its file operations. So PHP stand might not be the perfect example for the JIT because yeah, indeed it has to do a lot of file IO to read basically your whole PHP code base. That's true. Uh, but then I wonder, okay, what, what else is there that we could use? So yeah, the JIT, uh, it works with a Mandelbrot example, which we don't really use. It might have some very niche edge cases, but here I am asking like, is it worth all the overhead? Remember, when we, when we looked at the previous RFCs, it is a huge code base. There are so little people who actually know how to work on it. I'm not sure the JIT in this stage is like worth all the things that, uh, that come with it. But yeah, I, I would like to hear more opinions about it. And that's why I wanted to make this video. Uh, share your thoughts in the comments. Uh, let me know what you think about it. And maybe I, I'm missing something really obvious. If I do, tell me. You can uh, also send me an email uh, if, if that works better than a YouTube comment. I do follow up on all comments. So uh, you can just yeah, leave your thoughts down below this video as well. Um, yeah, anyway, it's interesting. And I would love to hear your thoughts. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.